Welcome to episode 19 of the Peasant Militia Challenge. We just successfully beat a Kraken with our main man, Albert, Aldebert, solo, which was a really good fight. And now we're going to be moving on to the Watermill fight, which is down here. Before we do that, though, we're going to do a quick resupply of everybody. Because uh, we are running low, very low on tools. So we got to make sure we're set for that fight. Fortunately, we have, I think, every single weapon we really need. And all of our characters are pretty set up for what they need to be doing. Nice, cheap tools. Exactly what we needed. Ammunition's good, too. Uh, we don't really need medical supplies. We should be fine without them. The other thing we need to remember to do is to put everyone back into the fight, because they are still in reserve, and if we join the Watermill fight, it's just going to be the one versus everyone, which is not what we're going to try and do. Uh, going solo in the Watermill fight is practically impossible, so I would not recommend that. But everyone else seems good at the moment. You've got your flail. Range attacks. Now, with Mr. Aldebert, should we put you back to your normal setting? Yeah. Should give you back your normal weapons because as much as we like having the whip out and the pole hammer, it's completely useless this setup in the watermill fight. Because you're reversing fallen heroes and geists and stuff. So I guess the whip could be useful against geists, so we'll keep it because it's quick hands. But the pole hammer is not that useful. We need our front line to be a bit defensive. And you've got great defenses there, bud. Trying to think. Some blunt weapons would be nice. Mr. Hammer, are you ready to use a hammer? Does not really look like it. Let's see. 15 fatigue plus the 5 because it is an orc weapon. 20 fatigue per turn. No, he's just not ready. I really wish he was because that hammer hurts. It's kind of like the bow. It just de destroys. But yeah, he can't use it just yet, sadly. But that's okay. We're okay to have somebody in the back. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anyone. Everyone's got their best armor. You've got all your spare weapons. Uh, one thing we could do, though, is you're the only reach person out there. We could give you strange mushrooms in that fight. I'm trying to think anyone else with horrible defense. Yeah, it's either you or you. Using the ranged flail, the two-tile flail would probably be best with the strange mushrooms to ignore shield damage and all that. Yeah, probably. We'll go with that. Why not? Anyways, food, tools, money, everything's looking good all for this final fight. Uh, let's do a quick camp. And what are we going to do with camping? Make everyone happy? Yeah, that's probably it. I didn't mention this in the last uh, fight with the Kraken, but if you want to, which I do recommend, using rest is a way of increasing the morale of your troops for free. Oh no, not this. One of our guys is getting chased down again. We've got too many criminal peasants in our ranks. Oh, boy. Okay, let's do the, the right choice always. Is either fattening them with crowns, but usually doing this one is pretty safe. Drawing. Do they have the drawing? They do not. Yes, we rolled, so we don't have to do the fight. They don't have the drawing, so wow. They're not going to be able to capture him. And if this succeeds with the drawing, that person will never be targeted again for the rest of his life. So that's nice. Okay, so we dodged that bullet. 
In all honesty, because of our scaling glitch with um, Legends mod at the moment, he probably would have been fine, the fight. But even so... All good, Euphoric, good spirit, repaired a bit of equipment. And they're all happy. You're your fort because you escaped the cops. <laughs> Good job, man. Uh, yeah, let's go. In terms of setup, the watermill fight, you really don't have to do as much setup as the kraken fight. I'd recommend having a strong melee party. But even then, the range that we have in our party is still going to be useful. Okay, so my son has been avenged. They have the hilt, we have the blade, and they're going to make us the legendary sword. Except for the fact, um, yeah, they're going to kill us instead. So, how nice of them. And all the undead come attacking us. So, this fight, uh, I should keep this always turned on, is just in a basic field, so it's nothing fancy like the swamp and the Kraken. This fight has 12 enemies every single time, it never changes. It has one giant hero fight, which is a undead... Uh, how do I say it? He's like a legendary fallen hero. Uh, there's fallen betrayers, there's nine of them, and they're basically upgraded versions of fallen heroes, and I think there's only two normal fallen heroes on the map. So basically, yeah, a really tough fight with people who have tons of armor. And he's holding the legendary sword that we want to take from him. So he's going to be using it against us, which is going to be very painful, indeed. Now I'm waiting on our turns, because as usual, undead enemies are very slow. And we can take advantage of that, allowing them to move up whilst we shoot them down. Now, archers in this fight are useful to an extent. They're not the best thing to use in this fight, but they can be helpful to lower the health and the armor of these enemies. Because you can see 75, 220 armor, sometimes their armor is half broken already, and archers can just help pepper down the enemy a little bit, which is what we'll do. And we will focus on the ones without shields, because the swords are scary. Yeah, we'll go for this main front guy. And look, the arm archers do nice damage. Wow, how did you miss those, man? Sheesh. That's better. And in all honesty, we kind of want to tie up the big main guy and have him not attack anyone. So the strategy for this fight is pretty basic, but it goes like this. You kill every single enemy except for the boss. Now, the reason for that is you kill the boss last because when he dies, he resurrects as a ghost and spawns a heck of a ton of geists. And if geists are screaming at you every single turn whilst you're fighting this mob of strong enemies, you're probably just going to get wiped out. So if you kill all of the strong uh, fallen betrayers and heroes, before all the geists spawn, this fight is a walk in the park when it comes to the geists. Because the geists don't do that much, they just scream and ruin you for the rest of the fight. So yeah, gotta kill everybody, then kill the main guy, then kill the geists. So three step progress, super easy. It's just surviving up until then, because these guys can hit pretty hard. Now, I'm contemplating whether we should move up or just let them rush into us. And I'm thinking one more turn of letting them move is the right choice. Mainly because we have a good formation, as always. Hey. Well, he's very fast. He moves first. And he's put himself in a place where we can stack a tank in front of him. Now, I have to remember, which is our best tank? I think it's the main guy, yeah, Aldebert. I think he has the best, and she's got the second best. If we can put her up on the hill next to him, that's actually probably the best position at the moment. So we'll do that instead. 
55%. I think that's the only shot we can really make with Mr. Crossbow for the moment. Beautiful. We almost have one Betrayer down already. Now, with Betrayers and the Fallen Heroes, they've got like a 90% to res, so just assume they're going to res. It's just going to happen. If you want to be super sneaky, you can steal the weapon off the ground before they res, and they won't pick up their weapon, and they'll be fighting with bare hands. But, I mean, that requires dedication and running up into their dead body, so good luck with that. <laughs> But, I mean, it is a strategy, so if you want to, go for it. I don't think we're very nimble enough to get that done. Man, there's too many shields on the field. There really are. 61 against the guy with the shield is probably better than against 61 with the guy without the shield. Okay, so we're going to put her here. And keep Mr. Rahegeist busy the entire time. So he doesn't run away. Now, that sword is very painful if it hits. Because it can do damage through armor. And she's not nimble, so I hope she can take a couple hits. That's what we want her to do. Beautiful damage. You can go through shields. But you don't have enough stamina to hit twice in a row. Dang, that's painful. Okay, don't break people's morale, please. Shields are annoying. So if you bring people with axes, like we have here, you should bring a few more axes to this fight, in all honesty. Can we get a stun off? 80%? And 66%? Dang it. Now, I'm considering breaking his shield or just going for the damage, and I think the damage is the right choice here. Because, if we chop his head off... Oh, but I mean, it is a betrayer that doesn't affect them. Yeah. If it was a normal zombie, chopping the head off allows them to not respawn. But, since it's a fallen hero style character, they'll still respawn anyways. Um, trying to think. This guy, maybe. He's got the stronger weapon, and we're getting a bit more swarmed on our top flank, so killing the bottom flank is going to be easy for us. This top flank needs a bit more attention. And he bites us. Good. Now, one of the best things about fighting fallen heroes and fallen betrayers, and even the legendary guy himself, is they all still have the ability to bite as an action, and the AI chooses it at random, so thank goodness he hit us for a bite on a 22% instead of his weapon attack. Because that would have been really damaging. Okay, enough talking about that. Let's go for the guy with the shield. Good, he's down. And in all honesty, I don't want to move forward, so we should just switch weapons. And either break it or hit him. No, we should break it. 60% to hit is not good enough for us at the moment. Knocking him back is good. Oh, I hate that they can split through. Man, you took a hit, man. That's bad. But we killed him. Let's move this way so he doesn't get to split through as well. We'll move up. And take him out. Good, good. Luckily, going for the bites. Uh, shield wall is very, very valuable. Dang it, not enough stamina for shield wall. Maybe we end our turn? Just so we can shield wall next turn. Archers can take care of that guy next turn. Someone might res this turn, but I can still move him here. Okay, going for the sweep attack. Okay. Yeah, we don't... Dang it, we put too much fatigue on this guy. Because of his new weapon. 
That's unfortunate. But I think we can risk it. I think we can move forward and hit him. You've got plenty of armor. And we got the stun. Yes, the RNG is on our side today. Uh, let's move up and 68, I guess. Let's go here so he can't split us and go sideways. Yep, no head, he comes back. You just have to get used to that. Now, 65%, I kind of want to break his shield. And I didn't... Oh, that sucks. Probably should have switched to this weapon. Yeah, because that does more damage to shields. Oh, that's a rookie mistake. Hopefully none of you noticed that. <laughs> but yeah, let's go back. Break him down. Snipe this one. Very good. And go for this guy, because he just rezzed. Okay, we got him down. He's almost down again. Uh, let's go for the collateral. Nice. And then, yeah, just go for him, I guess. Yikes. Yeah, these guys are the easier part of the fight. Because the big guy is the strong one. But even so, these enemies don't mess around. Considering moving here and going for that shot, like, there's no other good shots you can get. You can push him back. Actually, yeah, that'll work better. Keep him away so we can move up and swarm them. That worked out in the end. Shield wall that. 72% amazing headshot there, bud. Shield wall that. You can't shield wall because you got no stamina. And we miss an 81, that's unfortunate. Dang. Okay, that's one more guy coming back. They don't infinitely come back, so don't panic. They do only come back one at a time. Once, I mean. Nice stun. That was absorbed by the shield, that's unfortunate. That was devastating to us. Sheesh. And we hit our own girl in the head. Sheesh. Okay, well, RNG is just up and down, sadly. Turn done. Axe in 11 turns. We should kill the one that still has his turn. Let's go here. Dang it, Mr. 62. Okay, this one at the bottom is going to be a problem. Nice, that's another one down, but he'll come back. Okay, maybe we can move down here to kill this guy. That would be helpful. Get a stun off, that's very helpful as well. The morale was fixed, very good. Please don't... Oh my goodness, he hit his nine lives. Well, that is one of our newer characters, if you guys didn't already know. Um, <laughs> he's only come around for the last couple of fights, and he's probably only going to be here for this fight. It's probably not going to survive much longer. Uh, one other thing I do recommend is throwing weapons are good against fallen heroes. Uh, sadly, we didn't get enough levels on most of our ranged people to be super useful with throwing weapons. But if you can, go for it. Get some throwing weapons. Try 
trying to think. Let's just switch weapons. Because we're running out of stamina. That was nice. Which one's going to res? He's going to res, I think. We can still work on Ragaist a little bit, because he has a ton of armor and health. There's no way you'll accidentally kill him to st um, start phase two of the fight. But it is still better to try and put as much effort as possible on everyone else. Now, you are dying slowly. Let's put you in the back ranks and have someone else uh, bandage you up. Beautiful kill. This crossbow, crossbow guy has been doing very good work for us. Please hit him. Good. Well, that's technically most of them down. One. Two. Three come back. And we still have to deal with this guy who's axe in one turn. We need to kill him. Oh, we just saved the newbie's life. You are alive and you're going to survive, buddy. You witnessed death in your face. He is lucky. I think we can switch out here. Yes, and still have enough stamina to hit. Nicely done. Uh, archers just work on the main guy for the moment, because we can't get any good shots on this. And most enemies are actually really low at the moment, so we don't have to worry. You get out of the way. You shield up. And yeah, this fight, as long as you can handle fallen heroes with your team, you can actually take this fight a little bit earlier than we did, I think. I'd recommend still being as strong as possible with your characters, but it doesn't hurt doing this fight when you're prepared. Uh, I'm just going to say that the Kraken fight is the main problem, the main thing that you have to worry about uh, before you get to this fight. Because as you can see, we're not having the biggest trouble with this fight, which is very, very nice to see. Now, he's going to come back, he's on his last life, and then we can start working on the main guy. Oh no, wait. I forgot about him. That's right. I did forget. But that's okay. He was one of the latest ones we killed as well. You're still bleeding out. Uh, maybe we'll get a ranged person to give you bandages. I don't think they do have bandages, though. You don't have bandages. You do. Oh, okay. Should have stayed next to him. <laughs> it's hard to remember which one has which. As I usually have a lot of bandages on most of the characters, just in case. It is helpful. You never know when a bandage will save a, li save a life. But yeah. Now when it comes to this guy, I can't remember if he can be stunned, but I will show that off if he can be. But you can see he's not the hardest thing to fight if you have a good tank. And that's what it comes down to in most of these Battle Brother fights. Is if you have a good tank, you can go very far in this game. But if enemies cleave through you, ruin your morale, all that kind of good stuff, it's going to be hard for you to survive. Now, we're just going to wait a little bit, because we know this guy hasn't rezzed yet. It's good to keep track of who's rezzed and who hasn't. Um, which means they don't always, especially with fallen heroes, they don't always res the first turn you kill them. They can res up to two turns afterwards, as far as I remember. So just be patient. Don't rush phase two on this fight. I'm still going to shoot him a little bit, because he has a bit of armor on him. But I don't recommend rushing phase two, because there we go. If we had killed this guy too early, this guy may have come back and screwed us over. 
But now that we killed him a second time, he ain't coming back. Please save her. Good job. And now that you guys sit out of the fight, we will do a little bit of surrounding on the Rahageist, but a little bit spread out. Because the Geists spawn in like an area around him, and we kind of want the tanks to be next to Rahageist and some ranged pole maces and pole axes and stuff to hit him. Because when he comes back, he's turning into a ghost that still is melee and I think still has the sword as well. So just be patient. Don't do anything too crazy. Uh, we'll put you out here. Pole mace can stay nearby. You can stay nearby. Archers can weaken him a little bit. Pole mace will move you over there so you can get a geist maybe on your turn. Get a geist down here. And the other cool thing is, if you have a good tank, get all of your other brothers to maybe recover a bit of their stamina. Or if you have like a minstrel or something. Get yourself prepared for phase two. Not that it's an insane fight for phase two, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared. So we're going to go down this way, I think. The only other area we haven't really covered is this corner, but we should be fine. Okay, 63 health. We'll move you here, and we're ready. And not a moment too soon. He keeps hitting through the shield, which is annoying. Okay, let's switch out and get the kill. Ah, oh, or get the miss. That too can happen. And we'll wait on turns that happen. And he probably has nine lives. I might be forgetting this, but he probably still does. There we go. Now that we've killed him, we've activated phase two. And you can see the geists are very spread out. So it's very good that we set ourselves up. If, they, if we didn't spread ourselves out, the geists would be able to move in and scream as much as possible. But fortunately, we prepared for that. Yeah, still not enough stamina to hit something else. And not enough attack um, points either. Now, he doesn't act like a normal Geist. Because he still has a ton of health. And he doesn't have one health like the Geist. So you have to treat him like he's just reborn. But he has no armor in this phase. So he's a little bit easier to deal with. But then also not. So, yeah. It's still 5% to hit him with a ranged weapon. So that's the only downside of him being like that. Now that blocks sight, so I can't walk here to hit that Geist, but I can still try and hit this one. And we did. Good. Uh, and yes, Geists do seem to have a problem with ranged people, and they do have zone of control still, so be wary of that. I'm still going to go for the 5%. Ha! <laughs> I was going to say, because we've got nothing else to do with our archers. And I did not expect to roll a 1 there. Um, okay, that's really good. But yeah. if you got really nothing else left to do with your archers in this phase of the fight. So just roll for your 5%. You never know what will happen. Now, it's very risky keeping these guys out on their own, because they're going to get screamed at. So, guys have... Oh, and he finally hit. Now you can see what happens. Don't keep your guys grouped up like I did. That was a mistake. Uh, the legendary sword itself has a AoE attack once you hit the enemy. It's kind of like the chain lightning from our seer run. Whereas well, as soon as you hit the first person, lightning jumps to two other people. So if we didn't have them standing next to each other, the lightning wouldn't jump. 40%, eh? Can you switch anything useful? Throwing weapons? Yeah, you still can't do anything with it, bud. And you don't have anything but bandages. Yeah, that's right. Now, I wouldn't want to put these next to Geists in case they attack them, so don't do anything with these two. Uh, we 
need this one dead. Geists are being annoying. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, like I said, this part of the fight doesn't get super much easier. Especially with all the screaming. If you have a guy with rally, definitely bring him along. Oh, we needed that hit badly. So this guy wasn't going to get hit whilst he ran. Unfortunately, our rally guy doesn't have the best stamina, so... We can't effectively use him as a rally person. Nice dodges. And we really have to move you out of the way. Because that lightning is ruining us. Oh boy. That's a 40% down. Another 40% down. Shields up, and you two need to run, which is obviously what they're going to do on their turn. And you don't have recover, girl. Dang it, I forgot about that. Well, 5%ers still can do something. Now, it doesn't matter how far away you are from a 5% Geist, because they have like 999 range defense, so it really doesn't matter where you shoot them from, it's always going to be 5%. So you don't have to optimize for shooting geists. You rallied, which is nice to see. You're still running. But yeah, if this happened during the fight with all the um, fallen heroes, man, you, there's no way you can stop them from wrecking you. Aldebert, you've got great, great job. Great stamina. Great resolve. You're you're perfectly set up for this fight. Just like the Kraken fight. Now thank goodness he missed this time. Oh my goodness, the amount of times we are getting screamed at. Can we get a stun on him? He's immune to stun. That's what I wanted to show off. Yes, he, he can't stun the main guy. But you can hit him. Good job for rallying, bud. You're probably just going to get screamed at again. You're going to want to have your reach weapon out. And you're going to want to be able to assist somehow. Please don't get screamed at, buddy. Ah. Oh, I'm an idiot. I walked up in melee range. I walked up and joined up the lightning again. I've got to stop doing that. Don't do what I do. Try not to get anyone else to tank against, except for one person, against the lightning sword because of that. You'd think I'd learn, but you know. Too busy focusing on geist killing. Shields up, please. She needs to survive this. The less screaming, the better. So, as these guys are getting lowered down, it is making a big difference. As long as you guys rally, come on. Okay, that's a glitch. That should never happen. The lightning jumped, even though we were two spaces away. And he's down to two health. Okay, he's running for sure. But no, that, that should never happen. Maybe the game thinks the undead person that died there is still alive or something? I'm confused. Okay. So maybe be careful of that type of glitch when you go into your fights against Mr. Big Guy. Because his lightning's not jumping north through an empty square. It's jumping through a corpse. Interesting. Anyways, we're going to move away and get a 9%er. Oh, that's so nice to see. OK, 
Okay, you guys are finally rallying. Took your time. You're still running. You guys are an embarrassment. Okay, so the lightning's going across the ground this way. Interesting. You're rolling on a 5%. Goodness gracious, man. Maybe go up to the high ground. Switch out to the melee one. Maybe that gives you a slightly better chance. Oh, that's so much better. But yeah, if you guys have even the slightest better party than ours, you're going to do so much better. Especially against the screens. So, yeah. It's not the worst fight in the world, just as long as you handle it well. But I'm, I am foreseeing the fact that she is not going to make it through this. Can we go here? No stamina. That's okay. Oh, come on, Maldebert. You were doing so well before. Uh, you're pretty low health. I don't see much use out of you, bud. All of our good people are running away. Yeah, she's dead. Is she dead dead, or is she just knocked down? No, she's actually literally dead. Well, dying to a legendary character is one way to go for sure. Well, we almost killed him. But yeah, once you kill him a second time, you don't have to worry. He He's really dead. It's a good thing that in this game that all the undead characters that you fight will die guaranteed the second time around. There's no, like, triple lives or nine lives. I mean, there's nine lives, which doesn't really count as a death, I guess. Okay, you're coming back. Screams make such a difference. We're slowly moving whilst being away from the lightning guy because I don't want him to get hit. Man, he's taking a lot of hits. Lucky he's nimble. It would be a big different story if he wasn't nimble. And we killed him! Oh man, Conan, you've been doing so well with hitting those mace hits. And now that he's dead, you guaranteed get the drop, the legendary sword. And we just have to deal with this one last Geist. Normally, <laughs> you'd kill the Geist before you kill the legendary guy. But, unfortunately, we were very unlucky with that and did not get the Geist kill. Oh, and we get it on a 5 percenter. Oh my goodness, the game loves proving me wrong every single time. Anyways, that was the fight. Uh, you don't get the best XP out of everything. I guess if you get a few kills or the legendary kill himself, you get a bit of XP, but it's it's alright. Wouldn't complain too much, but welcome to the legendary sword. In all honesty, this sword isn't the most strongest sword you can get one-handed in the game. It's good if you build it as, I guess, a duelist? Uh, the benefit of this sword really racks up when you're fighting things like goblins or a lot of swarming enemies because you want to take advantage of that lightning spread damage. It's very useful in that sense, but other than that, um, yeah, it's alright. I'd probably say like fencing swords could do more damage or like two-handed swords can do more damage in a turn, but it is a fun sword to use. It definitely is. So, yeah, that's the fight there. Phase 1, Phase 2. It's pretty basic. It's like fighting undead normally. But you just have to make sure you don't activate big guy until you're ready. Uh, we don't need to do any fancy things. That's pretty much the end of the season so far. We accomplished everything we wanted to do. Uh, and we could do a quick little show-off of what the sword does with Mr. Aldebert himself. 
It's nice and shiny blue. It looks different to famed weapons. Famed armors and weapons are all orangey, sort of yellowy color uh, surrounded, but it's got nice and blue around it. It's got the same stats as an arming sword, I think. Where's the guy with the arming sword? There we are. Oh, 45, 40, 45. No, it's better than an arming sword. Where is his sword that he used? 45 to 50. Actually, no, it is. It is better than the Shamshir. So it is an upgrade. And it is a little bit better against armor, too. So yeah, it is a good sword. Especially if you're going as like a sword duelist. But other than that, I wouldn't say you should use it for too much else. It's got good durability. And I have heard that it does damage your friends on accident with the lightning, but I'm not too sure about that. So don't quote me on that. But the lightning is very unpredictable, and between 10 and 20 damage that ignores armor isn't always the most reliable damage. Um, like I said, probably goblins is where it's most effective. Because doing 10 to 20 damage doesn't do much in the grand scheme of things against things like orcs or... Maybe even bandits, it wouldn't be as effective. But it's very gimmicky, it's very fun. And what we'll do is we'll do a quick easy fight just to show it off. Quickly heal everyone up first, though. Just to finish the episode off to show you guys how cool it is. I mean, it does exactly what you saw in the fight when that uh, Rhygeist used it. The way he attacks is the exact same way you attack with it. Uh, we just got to quickly buy some tools. The weapons that the enemies drop, though, they're really nice. We've got so many great swords, some really cool helmets. That one was from our own guy <laughs> that died. But yeah, cool helmets, a bit too uh, heavy for my liking, but the weapons are cool. Someone got pooped on by a bird and we shot him down. Made everyone happy. That's good to see. Everything's all done there. Let's get them all healed up. Okay, let's go find a nice quick little easy fight. could find an easier one than that. Probably this orc warrior fight, uh, the orc young fight. It's probably the way to go. There we go. That'll show off the sword nice. And we'll fight at nighttime because it doesn't really matter. Hey, the guy to look out for, Aldebert, has the sword. We'll still take this legitimately like a normal fight. And here we are. So it's got a really cool tooltip there. It looks nice and lightning-y. And it converts to pretty good damage. Let's see how it goes. Lightning went up and diagonally that way, so it has its way of going in a direction. Usually it travels through enemies, so we'll show that off when we move him again, or when the enemies move up. Now we won't steal all the kills, we'll try and show off the kills for him. Okay. Pulling us in there. These guys should most likely move up. Come on, I want you guys to move up. Let's wait. Oh, he's got no vision. <laughs> he's got one vision, so he can't even use a reach weapon. That's all right. Okay, so now that he's moved here, let's see the lightning travel through. 
Yeah, and it does prioritize enemies. And as you can see, it's... I mean, it's nice damage. But even against weak things like Orc Young, we're smacking them with maces, arrows, axes, two-handed stuff, and that's just decimating them so much easier than it is with the weapon. It's also because he's got negative 15% damage, which is... Eh, it's alright. But it's a nice weapon. I just wouldn't say it's the most important weapon you should farm for late game. I think, like, famed weapons do a lot better. Especially since they can be all sorts of other things. And the fact that this weapon is specifically locked behind a Kraken fight... I just can't recommend farming for it. Or putting a heck of a lot of effort into specifically building a character around the lightning weapon. It's nice, don't get me wrong. But it's not something I desperately need in a run. Which is why you haven't seen me do this fight before this uh, season. Just because there's, there's no desperate need to get to that stage. I hate that he got stunned, but we can show him off once more, I think. And as you saw there, interestingly enough, I did not know that, but it's good to show off. The lightning danced on our own guy's square and didn't hurt him. Which means that that lightning is specific to whichever side of the battle is using it. And therefore you can't hurt your own friend with it. That is cool to know. So at least you don't have to worry so much about the lightning hurting your friends. On accident, if you're too bunched up yourself. But yeah. That is the legendary watermill fight. And the legendary sword. Legendary lightning sword. Which has its own name, and I've already forgotten the name of it. But yeah. We'll finish this up, this fight up, and we'll just say it's over. Nicely done. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. The showcasing of the legendary fights, especially with peasants, to show it off. Reproach of the Old Gods. Very interesting, unique weapon in the game. Uh, in Legends mod, it's not the most unique thing because Seers can do lightning, chain lightning and all that, so it sort of does the same idea, just as a weaker version. But it's the most unique weapon, I'd say, in the base game. Very cool looking, very nice and gimmicky, but to farm it is way too much effort, so yeah. Have fun with it all. Hopefully these fights show you um, some cooler parts of the game that are a bit harder to do. Hopefully it helps you in your own runs. And I hope you enjoyed this season with the peasants rising up against the Kraken and the peasants rising up against the amazing undead sword, we sword wielder, Rygeist himself, in the watermill fight. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next season with whatever we're going to do. Probably another sort of challenge. Hopefully one that works out better than this, but you never know. Anyways, till then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.